Okay, this is from the book uh, Digestive Tuna Book Review. It's by Dr. John McDougall. Um, this is part four. We're going to talk about the gallbladder. So first of all, I'm going to start with the anatomy kind of simplified. This is the gallbladder. The gallbladder is just a bag. It's for storage of bile. Bile is a fluid that primarily contains uh, bile salts that are helpful for digesting fats. They emulsify the fats. They're amphiphilic, meaning part polar, part, part nonpolar, and they help to pull the dietary fat into aqueous solution so the enzymes have more access to it um, to prepare it for absorption into the gut lining cells, enterocytes. So anyway, so what you need to know is, here's the gallbladder, and then the most important thing to know is the cystic duct. The cystic duct connects the gallbladder to the common bile duct. This is then going to drain into the, the bowel, the duodenum, uh, which is the beginning of the small bowel. Uh, these are stones, gallstones. Over 90% of gallstones are cholesterol gallstones. While they're just sitting in the gallbladder itself, they're no big deal. Tons of patients have those. Any doctor that looks at gallbladder sees those all day long every day. The time where it becomes a problem is if one of these gallstones passes out of the gallbladder into the cystic duct and it will obstruct the cystic duct. The gallbladder will continue to secrete mucus and push against it and try to expel its bile but because it can't get across there, that will cause pain. Sometimes a gallstone can pass through the cystic duct and become lodged in the common bile duct. The common bile duct then passes through the head of the pancreas and it drains out into the bowel, which will be located here. So the important thing to get from this picture, know that this is the gallbladder, know that you need the cystic duct to connect the gallbladder to the common bile duct, and this drains into the bowel. And then a stone stuck in the cystic duct will cause back pressure on the gallbladder. That's called acute cholecystitis. Um, this is the common bile duct with a stone stuck in there, and that'll cause a blockage of bile exiting from the liver and from the gallbladder, and this will cause back pressure and stasis because now the bile can't get out of here and get into the bowel so that you can get it infected. Uh, infection of the common bowel duct is called cholangitis, and it can ascend up into the liver. That's ascending cholangitis. I'll show you more pictures in a sense to make sense of all this, but the most important thing to know is high amounts of dietary fat predispose you to forming gallstones because the cholesterol is increased and it'll precipitate out of the, out of the bile and you'll form these stones and they can cause problems for people. They can block the cystic duct or they can block the common bile duct. This is a lot more common cystic duct blockage by a stone than is common bile duct blockage by a stone. Okay. This is now adding a little more uh, anatomy information to the slide. So here's your stomach. When you eat a high fat food, a uh, hormonal signal is sent to the gallbladder to contract, to squeeze the bile out. So it'll then drip into the duodenum here. This is the duodenum. Duodenum is the beginning of the small bowel. You can see the bile normally dripping into the duodenum, and that's coordinated, the timing, with release of the high-fat food into the bowel. So this will help its digestion, again, to emulsify, to break it up into small pieces and pull it into aqueous solution so digestive enzymes can uh, chop it up into smaller pieces so it can be absorbed across the gut lining, the enterocytes. Other thing to notice is that the pancreatic duct is right here. The pancreas makes lots of enzymes for digestion of food. It connects to the common bile duct. This is right here called the ampulla of vater, and this is the sphincter of Odi where it opens up and the bile drips into the duodenum. Okay, so again, you can get a stone lodged right here in the cystic duct causing back pressure on the gallbladder. That's called acute cholecystitis. You can get a stone lodged in the common bile duct. See, it's called a common bile duct, and that can cause accumulation of bile and dilation of this duct with the stasis, meaning that it's unable to move, move into the bowel, can lead to an infection, and that's called cholangitis. Infection of the bile duct is called cholangitis, and it can ascend up into the liver. That's called ascending cholangitis, a dangerous infection. That infection is rare, but acute cholecystitis is pretty common. Gallstones in the gallbladder is super common. See that all day long, every day. And all of this comes from eating these high-fat diets. Here I just drew these purple stones, and so the purple stones in the gallbladder, just gallstones in the gallbladder, we call that cholelithiasis. That is no big deal. Again, we see that all day long, every day. However, on the relatively rare event that it gets stuck in the cystic duct. That can be very painful, and that happens often enough that you're going to see it. 
um, and that can cause acute cholecystitis, and that can require surgery. You can surgically remove the gallbladder. You can put a drainage tube across the liver into it. That's called a percutaneous cholecystostomy. I did hundreds of those. Um, if you obstruct the common bile duct by a stone or a tumor, you can need to do special drainage procedures. ERCP is a gastroenterologist goes from below. Uh, percutaneous transhepatic biliary drainage, PTCs is when you come from above. I did plenty of those. Um, if the stone should lodge in the distal common bile duct where it becomes the ampulla of otter, um, that can also block pancreatic, pancreatic outflow and cause uh, pancreatitis. So anyways, just wanted to give you a sense of the anatomy, showing you the pictures. Now we'll get into the text of the book. Okay, so um, over 90% of gallstones, GS for gallstones, are cholesterol gallstones. The stereotypical patient is a fat female, 40 and flatulent, over 40. Women get more gallstones than men because the estrogen causes more cholesterol to be secreted in the bowel, but they're really common in men. Again, I see them all day long, every day in men and women. Um, the higher the dietary cholesterol, the higher the risk of gallstones. The higher the amount of animal foods a person eats, the more likely they're going to develop gallstones. As a matter of fact, in the Western world, in women over 40, they're so common, they're just considered normal. Um, and again, most of the time they're not a problem, but when they're a problem, they can be quite painful. Um, if a woman's taking hormone replacement theory, estrogens, uh, oral contraceptive pills tend to be estrogenic, like ethyl estradiol, or she's in a third trimester of a pregnancy, that is all those things are associated with increased estrogen, increased risk of gallstone formation. If she's fat, and if a man is fat, increased uh, obesity, you get increased aromatase enzyme in the fat cells, more estrogens, increased risk of forming gallstones. Um, aging itself is associated with increased secretion of cholesterol into the bile. And what you're doing is you're supersaturating the bile with cholesterol, meaning the, the cholesterol concentration gets so high in the, in the bile that it precipitates out. Um, again, I put the page numbers for the book in there if anybody wants to look this stuff up. If a small stone gets displaced in the cystic duct and obstructs its acute cholecystitis, the gallbladder contracts against it, but it can't push the bile past it. That can be very painful. The gallbladder can even keep enlarging because it keeps releasing you know, its mucus secretions, and it'll get bigger and bigger, and it can pop. That would be a perforated acute cholecystitis. Um, the gallstone um, can also lodge in the common bile duct. It can get infected because, you know, a lot of time there'll be a little bacterial colonization or something, but when there, and it won't be a problem because it keeps moving along, but when there's stasis, the infection can spread upwards in a bad direction, and go into the liver and make the patient very sick. Even they can, they can even get into the blood, be septic. But that's rare. That's rare stuff. Acute cholecystitis, that's common. I see that every week. Gallstones in the gallbladder, I see that all day long every day. Um, treatment, open surgical drainage. You can remove the gallbladder. That's an open cholecystectomy to remove the gallbladder with an open surgical incision. To just put in the laparoscopic devices to remove it, that's called a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. To put a transhepatic drainage tube with ultrasound guidance, that's what I used to do in fluoroscopy, percutaneous cholecystostomy in my previous life as an imaging-guided surgeon. Um, and to do percutaneous biliary drainage, that's more for special cases when you got a, a tumor or rarely, almost always for tumor disease rather than stone disease, even though you could potentially do it for stone disease in some special cases. Uh, gallstone in the ampulla of otter can cause pancreatitis. You always look for that, but it's hard to see in an ultrasound. There's always gas down in that area, so you can't really tell. You can see it on a CT, in my experience, better. You can do an MRCP, magnetic resonance, cholangial pancreatography. But the point of this whole talk was if you eat high-fat diets, you get more gallstones, and it can potentially cause your problems. So don't eat high-fat diets. Eat low-fat vegan diet. That's the smart move. When Burkert was working in Africa where they ate plant-based plant -based diets, like in Uganda, Almost no one ever had a gallstone. He saw one gallstone in about you know 20 years, and it was on somebody who'd been living in the West. The Pima Indians, uh, who came from northern Mexico but then got absorbed into Arizona after 1848, they um, had tons of gallstones. 70% of them had uh, gallstones, and they get a lot of gallbladder disease, need surgery for that. Tata Humada still eat the old-fashioned Mexican indigenous diet of corn, beans, greens, squash. They almost never get uh, symptomatic gallbladder disease. Um, best treatment again most of the time for just gallstones in the gallbladder is do nothing just eat healthy and forget about it and you'll probably be fine most people will remain asymptomatic at least 80% of them um, when you eat well your gallbladder stays well usually most of the time uh, if you do a gallbladder surgical removal like a cholecystectomy the bile then can't be stored in the gallbladder and it'll tend to just continuously drip into the duodenum and that can 
uh, cause irritation on the right side of the colon, leading to diarrhea. So that's post-cholecystectomy diarrhea. Um, it can cause chronic irritation on the right side of the colon, and it increases the risk of colon cancer. So the bottom line of all this talk is people who eat high-fat diets get more gallstones. Women have it a little worse than men do. And the smart move is eat a low-fat diet, a plant-based diet, and you'll be unlikely to ever have problems with all this stuff. And even if you already have problems with it, if you do that, you'll be less likely to progress. So that's the scoop on gallbladder and diet. Hope that was helpful.